Hello, it's the great Canadian Bagel here with one of the dumbest controversies in Canadian politics. Recently, Pierre Poiliev had a 90-minute interview with Jordan B. Peterson, a clip of which I'll be showing here, about why he is running for the Conservative leadership. As that interview, Poiliev said he likes speaking in simple Anglo-Saxon words to deliver his message, because they are more readily understood and more cutting than loan words. Here's a clip of the video, so you can hear the words straight from the man himself, and not my interpretation. It's so interesting listening to you because, you know, your 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 narratives center around the individual individuals who make up the working class, the working class under duress, and isn't necessarily the way in that you might regard as most probable for a conservative. You know, and so why is it, so I think that's extremely interesting and in this upside down world of ours, why is it though, do you think that people find you capable of delivering hope? And I mean, there's other candidates on the conservative front, we should talk about that soon, but what makes you credible on the hope front, do you think, in terms of your what you're offering and, and who you are? Because I speak clear, plain language that makes sense to people. So, you know, I'm, I'm a believer in using simple um, Anglo-Saxon words that strike right at the, uh, the meaning uh, that I'm trying to convey. And so I say things that people say, yeah, that actually makes sense. So that folks say, well, why is, it, why is inflation running rampant? And I explain to them in direct language that when you print more money, you have more dollars chasing fewer goods, it, lead, it leads to higher prices. Um, folks say, yeah, that actually makes sense. Isn't that what we were taught in grade school? And the explanations they get from everyone else are a bunch of convoluted, nonsensical, um, irrational uh, excuses. Um, and so they, they like my direct, blunt style, not because it's simplistic, but because it's simply true. What do you like? Now, with no hesitation, CTV News publishes an article the other day saying the term Anglo-Saxon is a dog whistle to white supremacists. Let that sink in for a second. Using the term Anglo-Saxon in reference to the words one is using is a dog whistle to white supremacists. Now, what does Anglo-Saxon refer to? Well, Anglo-Saxon refers to a group of people, the Anglo-Saxons who conquered England in the 400s and ruled it until about 1066. After 1066, the Anglo-Saxons still made up the bulk of the population of England, but were ruled over by Normans, who spoke a French tongue. Over time, the Anglo-Saxons and the Normans formed a melting pot folk we refer to today as the English, who spoke the English tongue. So the Normans, who spoke Norman, a French tongue, what we would call, what would we call the tongue used by Anglo-Saxons? Yes, it's pretty straightforward. It's typically called Anglo-Saxon or Old English. However, both names are perfectly valid. So to say one is speaking with Anglo-Saxon words is to say they are using words which shockingly hail from Anglo-Saxon. Now, you ask, why would someone only want to use Anglo-Saxon words? Well, the reason to only use Anglo-Saxon words goes back to the root of modern English. That is to say, the predecessor that was Anglo-Norman. The tongue spoken by the Norman upper class after they ruled England for several generations. In Anglo-Norman, and its offspring Middle English, Norman and Latin words were the sophisticated words used by the upper class which is why, to give one like thing, the words for meat diverge drastically from the words for animals. 
Since the poor raised the livestock, the Anglo-Saxon name stuck, and since the rich ate the meat, the Norman name stuck. Therefore, Anglo-Saxon words, lord over simple communication, and Norman and Latin words, lord over sophisticated communication. Poiliev wants to use simple, bare-bones, straightforward words, so as not to befuddle or dazzle the listeners with technical shop talk or becloud them through overly showy speech. Unlike me just now. Thus, if one were to say they prefer to use simple words, it is technically more right to say they are preferring Anglo-Saxon words in their speech. Anglo-Saxon words are the majority of speech. Nearly all words in a day-to-day -day life are Anglo-Saxon. It is only when speech arrives at lordom or shop talk that non-Anglo-Saxon words start to become mainstream. In fact, one can communicate a very detailed rebuttal without the use of a single non-Anglo-Saxon word. Now, that is not to say using only Anglo-Saxon words is superior. Sometimes it can cause more befuddlement than a loan word. What can we say then? Well, with confidence, Anglo-Saxon words are not racist. And to refer to words from Anglo-Saxon as Anglo-Saxon is a correct speech lore term for said words. It's funny, sometimes reporters and blue check marks on Twitter get to such an outrage that one must think that since they hear these dog whistles, that... They could be the dogs themselves. Conversely, an all person hearing the term Anglo-Saxon words would just think it needlessly specific. Yet, we have a group of people who immediately see the right speech law term as a signal for white supremacy. One must reckon that these people are the white supremacists themselves, for dog whistles can only be heard by dogs, so then a person who can hear it must then be a dog. The Lang's progressive twist to construe the man as racist continually abuse me. Polyev is well known by anyone who listens to him to use the most specific words, even when it's technically unnecessary, so that his tongue is as specific as possible. We not go into the fact his wife is Venezuelan or one of his largest platform planks is helping immigrants get certified for their jobs. Nay, we do not even need to view the racist actions of his rivals, such as Trudeau, in comparison. The whole pride of a scandal is a dying breath of an establishment who still think they can cow their opponents by slinging mud at them. The ironic thing is, as the tale of the boy who cried wolf teaches so well, you can only lie so many times before nobody believes you. Now, with all that said... Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a special addendum to the schedule because I didn't want it to go too long before touching upon it. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe, comment below what you thought of the video. And before anyone asks, up until this show at the end, I intentionally used only Anglo-Saxon words where possible. I This has been my only scripted video to ensure this, so let me know if this sounded w weird or you liked it or whatever. Maybe I'll do more shorter videos like this in the future if people like it. Now, I don't really like scripting, but in this case I had to script because I can get rambly and flowery if I don't script a video, or if I don't script things, and I wanted to make this incisive and not flowery. So let me know. That all said, uh, the fact that I only used Anglo-Saxon words for almost the entire video, does that make me a racist? Comment below. And with that... I bid you adieu, and I will see you Sunday for another Ontario update.